we are crafting so now if you guys are sitting there and it's middle of the day or it's after dinner and you're sitting down and you're relaxing with whatever because you're done with your chores uh-uh get in your craft room and let's get it on page three baby come on you can craft that's relaxing okay so just get get in there let's go i am going to use reuse a uh, priority mail envelope um it's it's more like a cardstock than <coughs> than even a lightweight chipboard but it, it is you know it's got a little bit of thickness to it so um i am going to I've got the uh, Tim Holtz gadget gears um, and so I am going to cut myself uh, uh, quite a few of these um, and then I'll come back to you. If you don't have these, they do have some gears in the paperwork if you're working on this paper. If not uh, and you're working on a different uh, paper well then by all means grab some of your ephemera and when i get back i guess i can just cut this on my cutter when i get back with you um i think we're going to just decorate this page up a little bit because we um we made the other one quite thick quite thick so Let me cut this off. Come on, get in there. Okay. So here is a nice bit of paper for me to use. You know, free stuff. Free stuff. We love free stuff. Okay, guys. So I'm going to make myself some of these um and probably uh decorate them some and uh i don't know if you want to come along with that or not well I, I will and um you know one thing i could do is cut up a bunch of these i guess and sell them at my store if anybody wants them um yeah so if if you um want some of these just let me know and i'll put some in my store and uh yeah so we're good okay uh or i'll put them on facebook and then you don't have to pay for all the crap that etsy does i don't know we'll see if you want some just let me know i'll just stick them in an envelope and send them to you <laughs> how's that that's a good plan okay i'll be right back okay so I played around a little bit and I played with um, my distress reinkers. So I had walnuts. Oh, hey, 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 hush, hush. I had uh, walnut stain, pumice stone, rusty hinge, and crushed olive. Uh, and then I also have this um, patina. It's from Ranger um, for metal, and it's it's the color rust. So, um, and I'm gonna make put three on to make them, you know, a little more substantial because this was just that really kind of almost cardstock. Um, I did not realize how thin those those uh, those things were from the post office until I started using them for something like this thought it would be a little more substantial but it is not okay and then i just need to figure out which way this lines up perfectly and then okay so this one i still have to finish so i thought i'd bring you along since i've played around a little bit um so these are the two bottom ones. I don't need to color those. I also had some Faber-Castell gelatos. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you the color. But it's the darkish brown one and the rustic reddish orange one. Um, 
And I think all I did here was I kind of picked up the rest of, of the Distress Inks. But I'm just kind of doing some gelatos here and there. Okay, so there's some of the gelatos on there. This is just some dirty water now. It started out clean. So I've got some water on there. So I'm going to see what my gelatos is going to give me. And you want to kind of be careful to not cover up all of, uh, you know, to, to blend the colors too much. Because then you just end up with mud. So... That's kind of interesting. I want a little more orange in it. So I'm going to... Now this patina stuff dries pretty fast. So you have to kind of work... Because you don't want like a bright orange spot somewhere. Okay. So there it's got... Oh, I'm so sorry. I've got the hiccups now. There it's got some um, some depth to it, but I still want a little more oomph. I'm going to try a little bit of the um, crushed olive. And I'm just playing, guys. I mean, there's no right or wrong way of doing these. You just keep playing. Keep getting some, you know, some depth in there. Uh, if you want it darker, we can go a little walnut stain. And you can also put it on the side. Um, on You know, like I've got a glass mat. I was just putting it on the glass mat. Uh, and you don't you don't want to be uniform. I think I'm going to go for a little bit more orange to mix in with that wet. And then I'm going to let it dry and see uh, what we end up with there. Um, another thing that I thought would be kind of interesting, now I have a couple that are just, uh, that I'm not going to have duplicates for. So I wanted to see, I have some somewhere, let me find it, let me find it, where are you? That's black, that's not what I want. Oh, come on. Where are you? I'm pretty sure I had some distress. Maybe it is embossing and not... <coughs> oh, so sorry. Maybe it is embossing and not glitter. Let's see. Okay. Distress. Let's see what I got here. It looks like these are both the same, but they're not. So this is Distress glitter, glitter, and I've got Brush Corduroy and Vintage Photo. And I think I'm going to mix them. Let's play. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. Okay. So I am going to take this other brush. No, I'm going to take my spatula. And I'm going to take some glue all. I'm just going to pour a little bit of the glue all. I don't know why I took the lid off. 
pour a little bit of that glue all and put it all over this little fella. And that will definitely spread your glue around. And it got through on the back, so that'll be interesting putting it down on the coffee <laughs> on the coffee filter. And my spatula wipes clean. I love it. So let's see if I can get the glue off the back side, at least the majority of it. All right, so. As you can tell, I haven't used these yet. I have to break the plastic. I don't remember. I think I got these in the Halloween section. So there's a little bit of the brushed corduroy. It, it, hey, my fan is on. It, it, it's pretty hot here today, so... Okay, and then this one is the vintage photo. All right. So, I'm going to let that one dry. And I had one other one that was going to be by itself. I've got that one, that one, and that one. That's get, the, the middle ones are getting two except for the one I just covered because I didn't have enough to do. Um, I wanted more than, than just two because I could have done two with three in it, but I, I, did, I wanted more than that. Um, and I have another one of these to do and then this one by itself. Okay, so I think... I will put the lid on these so I don't send them flying. <laughs> I have been known to do that. Okay. And I'm not using all of these on this next page. I'm just, I thought I might as well go ahead and, and uh, make some up for the book. I might need to make more. Uh, okay. I'm going to start with the orange. If you guys don't have this, if you have liquid pearls, if you know, just whatever you have that's got some color in it, it's just on paper, guys. So you can use all of your different um, inks. You can put matte medium or, uh, you know, over them when you're done um, so that if they get wet, they don't dribble on other things. Okay, so there is all orange. Now I'm going to come in with some pumice stone. Which is kind of a gray. And I just kind of want it just to be light, lightly on everything. So I'm not brushing it on at all. Just kind of letting it do its thing. All right. And now I'm going to pat it dry. And now I want to try and come in with some green and see if it'll actually be green. That has been my goal was to get some green in here. Yeah. 
it's actually acting like it doesn't like this one now this has got pigment in it so maybe i can't do the whole thing first because it's acting like now the the you know this water-based dye stuff it's it's not liking it <coughs> oh i'm so sorry and i did get a little bit of gold out so i'm gonna play I'm playing so there's a little bit of gold and I think I'm gonna put some walnut stain in it right next to it and see what I can get so and my brush is wet need more Now this gives you a nice bronzy color. I kind of like that one. I want to get that kind of touched around on some of these. Give it a little, little bit of sparkle, but not much. Just gonna kind of daub it. There we go. Let's see. Let's just kind of lightly stroke a little bit of this on. That one. And a little bit on this one. And a little bit on this one. This still needs to be darker though. Unless it's just going to be all rusty. I do want some darkness. A little bit of darkness. So just a drop of the walnut stain. I'm just kind of playing how I'm doing my brush on it. Kind of mixing it in with the, some of the gold. Yeah, somehow I think that one's my best one yet, but we'll find out. Once they dry, you can really see what you've done with them. So I think I have them all done now. I've uh, got this one with the glitter. I don't want to do too much glitter because this is for a man. Um, and I think, oh no, I do have this one. I thought I had another one to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one, put it up there. And this is kind of how I start all of them. <laughs> Just get what I've, what, oh, geez. Hey, that's a good day. That's a good day in the craft room. So this will have a little bit of that gold pigment that's in that ink. A little shiny a little shiny but not too bad and I think we need some orange back on this one I definitely need some I definitely need some clean uh, 
Let's see. Let's try some more walnut stain. You don't want like straight lines that's you know that's what you want to kind of not get is some straight lines so if you have straight lines and you, you just need to tamp around it just to okay Trying a little uh, crushed olive again. Let me get the dark. Kind of get some of that off of there. Trying to get another color in to make it interesting. Alright, I believe I'm going to let that one dry and see how it how it's coming on. I'm going to add a little bit of orange back to this one. It got pretty uh, monotone. I don't know. It, uh, monochromatic. Got to be just one color. Whatever the word would be for that. And I don't want it just one color. So now I got a little bit of orange mixed in that puppy. And this one's got some swirls in it that I kind of like, but I'd like to break them up just a little bit. All right. Okay, so guys, that's, you know, that's it. That's that's what I'm did, what I'm did. <laughs> that what I'm did. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oh, all right. I'm having way too much fun over here, guys. Y'all need to come over and sit with me. And you will get some crafting done just because we'll have fun. Just because we'll have fun. You don't have to be doing the same thing I can do. I'm doing. You just just sit across from me and we can chat. We can chat. I mean, I know that I carry on most of the conversation, and uh, but you know, if you guys would leave me comments, then I would have more to discuss, um, and you know things like that. But hey, I am not complaining. I am going to take this wet one and we'll see if that will stick to maybe the paint. Maybe the paint or to the patina part, this, this stuff, maybe it will stick. We'll see. I just didn't want to have that little bit go to waste. Okay, now I'm going to clean up. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get that in there. I couldn't get it in there. I'm going to let these dry. I'm sorry if I'm yelling in your ear, but I am leaned over putting my glitter away. Oh, it does not want to go. The drawer says, nope, that's too high. That's too high. That's too high. Uh, that's okay. That worked. 
All right, I will have to wash this brush out. See, you gotta use you use a brush. You have to wash it out. I love these things. I am gonna find some of these. I am. I is. I is. I is. I is. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna put all this stuff away, and then I will come back, and we will actually work on page three. Talk to you guys in a little while. I think I should wash my hands too. <laughs> That's a good day in the craft room. Bye. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys. Okay. I was thought I was videotaping and I was going to town. So I took one of these that I had and I cut it down the center and then I put them on my, I put my paper on my grid and I figured out where I wanted, because remember now these were, let me just, let me just, uh, well, let me grab two pieces of something so that I can show you. I don't want to mess that up if I want to use that on something. Okay. So I took the two pieces and I crossed them. And I figured out where up here I wanted them. And that's where I put the points. All right. Now they, they are a little longer. And then I made, I had the point of the manila folder piece along the edge of page number three's map. And then when it came down to the spot over here where then you would see the uh, the bottom of the page again. I made a mark right there and I did it on both sides. Then I took it to my scoreboard and I scored from the point to the line and I scored. Then I cut three eighths or half an inch I cut it, which left me with this piece, which I used also. Okay, so you'll do that with both of these pieces and you will end up with, and then once I got that done, you will end up with this. Okay, there's the half inch. I think mine is about three eighths of an inch. And uh, I will show you where I measured up to from the top of my file folder. It's nine and one eighth, uh, nine and one eighth. And, but again, you know, it's just however long your piece is or, or what you enjoy looking at, how, however you enjoy looking at it. It's kind of like a vest or a fancy tea pocket, whatever you want to do. So um, this is 22.8 centimeters. All right, so that's how long mine are. And then whatever was hanging over the edge, I just sliced off of, of this. And I rounded the corner. I'm having my, whatever side this is, my right-hand side one come over the top of my left hand side one like that okay so there's that then those strips i had this washi tape from leslie thank you love and i washi taped the strips that were left I bring them right up to the edge of the fold line on the manila folder and then just line them up along this edge and it gives you like a folded lapel. Just bring it right up. Oh, come on. Bring it right up to there. There we go. And then this one, I'm actually going to fold under so it looks like, you know, part of a piece of material. Okay, so that's where we're at so far. 
Then take these guys off. I started to glue that down. I said, "Oh, wait a minute! I've got, I've got a, I've got to uh, actually cover these before I put the lapels or whatever you want to call them on." Okay. This one goes on this one. Now, um, this one is a little smaller right here. Um, I do have, I wanted a little bit of an edge where I could fold it over just to finish it off nicely. Um, but if you remember, this one's going to go over the top of this one. So that little bit hanging out is not a problem. So don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. There you go. Forget about it. My husband has some New Jersey friends. And uh, he, he met them when he was um, traveling during his um, consulting stuff that he does. And so every once in a while he'll say, forget about it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So yeah, there you go. Okay, so we're just going to put some Fabri-Tac down. And I'm going to lay it on top of the material, the back side of the material, so that I can get myself a nice little fold around area all the way around. There we go. There we go. And actually, on this little fold-out piece, we can just glue that material down on it because it will just fold around the edge of the paper and give a nice, a nice visual look to that piece. So now we're going to let that one dry. And we're going to do the same thing with this one. Come on, glue. So here we go. This will be fun. Uh, Scrap Queen is one uh, person that I watch, she made a, oh, I don't know. She was, I don't know, I don't know what she was making now. I can't think. I think it was a Sherlock Holmes thing. Um, and she made a thing out of paper and, and it was kind of like this, but, um, so I, w I saw that and I go, oh, you know, that would be fun. Something like that would be fun to do in the book. Mine is going to be different than hers, uh, but still fun. Still fun. Okay, so there's that. Let me put this down. Okay, so now we just need to let these dry and then we'll be able to make our pocket. Oh, that had quite a bit pop out of it. Let go of me. I just cleaned this too. Getting glue all over it again. <laughs> busy bee, busy bee. All right. This one feels like it's pretty dry. I'm not going to fold that over yet. But I am going to go ahead and start folding this over. Just put your fabric tack down. You can put it on the material or on the file folder. It doesn't really matter. And for this circle... I'm going to cut right up to it 
so that it will and I'm going to give myself a cut right there as well um, and that way I can get that nice angle okay all right so I am actually going to cut that piece off and just flip everything over so I just I just cut the top piece off the little point up oh well put it down the garbage and I'm gonna cut that off there we go okay now the corner I cut each piece there we go and just separate each piece out and then this I cut one piece so I could get the little bit of an angle here and looks like I glued down <laughs> there we go and I think I used up all the glue gluing it to itself okay and then this over to here yeah there we go so that gives me the nice flat edge there nice round edge there see how nice that is and then this will fold over go on my page right like that that looks so cool and then this will go right here and this is going to curl underneath to give that a little finish oh that is so cool that is so cool yes I love it I love it and then this one will be like this right there with this that's up a little bit more probably right about there and then I'm gonna find a really cool button to put here um, it's gonna have to be relatively flat because I don't want it inter intermixing with the shame I don't have a small one that looks like a sprocket I do have some let's see do I have anything that looks like a button no I got that but nah I don't like that I think I had another uh, there's this one I don't know though it doesn't really look like a button I'll look I'll look and see what I have in my buttons but um, anyway I'm going to really kind of let this all dry I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one just um, when you're when you're wanting to get this flat part if you kind of give it a little cut down to the card the, the the board you will be able to get that fold nicely And still have that nice flat surface that's what you're after so however many times you think you want to cut it out um, 
You can even cut out little little bits at the corner and then that part will come around like that that part will come up and then do the same thing with this little corner just a teeny little there you can see how much I cut out right here and you see that will come up and then these two areas will come over and you will have a nice flat pretty surface okay guys all right so uh when i come all back we will put on our little lapel things and figure out what uh, button but i'm gonna let these guys really get a good dry on them okay i will talk to you in a little while bye love you all so much i did want to show you that here like this piece um I'm going to I'm going to uh cut this little sliver off or you can just fold it. And since it's cotton, we might be better folding it. But I cut a little bit out of there so that I'm not going to have the bulk where my fold is, okay? So, um I just wanted to show you that and I think uh, also up here we need to do a little bit of a just a little bit of a fork area so this will go here and this can get folded over and cut off the rest of it something like that or we can fold this over and then fold this over on top but either way i think this little piece here does not have to be that long all right and this one doesn't have to be quite as long either so just check all of your little uh tidbits and make sure that you're uh, you know, that you're not getting into your fold areas, which uh, this needs to be a little bit more of an angle. I still need to be able to pull it over, but that way there's less of it in my actual fold area. Okay, so I'll be back in a second once this is all dry. Okay, so now that uh, this one is definitely dry... So I am going to just go over it with my bone folder and I am going to set it on here and I want it to come out first. I don't believe I cut this the proper height. So let's do that. No reason in having a paper too large for what we need right now all right so yeah i did not cut it so we need to do that first and we're going to cut it right about there all right let me get this cut oh goodness <laughs> i had a lot of things on my cutter <laughs> now they're all gone just little things. Uh, let me see. Let me see how well I did here. Yeah, that's going to be fine. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Now, we are going to Good morning, glue. Good morning. <laughs> We're going to open up and put our hinge on the back side. So around the edge of our paper. And we're going to want this piece right here to run along the edge along the bottom of the piece. 
So just kind of get all that lined up. Pull it up just a smidge. Make sure you're getting it all the way in to the fold line. So there's that one, this one, open that up, open that flap up, get that glue on, I keep falling off there. Alright, and the same thing on this one, you're going to want to line it up. My little puppy hair is all over this. <laughs> You're going to want to line this up. Pull that up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, flip this over. Alright, and then this one is going to go over this one so it totally covers this piece that we couldn't get covered. And now for the lapels, uh, I'm going to do this one first. <laughs> My Fabri-Tac here is exploding on me, a little poodle head. Come on. There we go. Okay. So we're going to put Fabri-Tac all over because we're putting this on material and I just think the Fabri-Tac is the best when you're putting it on material of any kind. Okay. And now the idea is we want this piece, of course you can do it any way you want, but I want this piece to hit the end of the vest or whatever we're calling this. Have this come down all along the very edge. And then I'm folding that little piece under. I think that map on there just looks great. It looks like a double-sided because this is a map and then this is the map. So it looks like inside would have this material kind of stuff. Okay, and then on this one, we're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to be folding the bottom under. It's just going to go... See, it's just going to go right along the edge. All right, so let's get the Fabri-Tac going again here. All right. Okay, now I want to make sure it's going all 
all the way to the edge so that they're about equal. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, I want to find myself whatever button I'm going to use. And we're going to seal these two ends down. Uh, I don't think... Well, that's kind of nice. But, I would like to have something that looks a little more antique than that. Uh, no, that's not a manly button. Oh, I'm throwing my buttons away. <laughs> not really, it just, it did a kamikaze dive into my trash can. <laughs> so guys, I am going to find my just perfect button. And when I do, I will come back and we will get that baby put down on here and then this page into the book because this is, this is a done deal. This one is. All right. And then we'll be parting, starting on page four. Okay. Back in a smash. Bye. Okay, guys. So I found a button that I like. It's going to go right there like that. And I've got some of this little black cording that I um, that I have, and I'm just going to run a piece up and down in there. Oops. Oh, good. Just so there is a stitch in there. I guess I could uh, I could do it twice, but. The more times you do that, the more thickness you're going to have to um, uh, to try and contend with. Now, the bottom of this button actually become comes lower than the uh, the piece that we're um, running this through. So, oops, there we go just going to put it through twice so it's a little more substantial this is wax so it it, it is kind of nice because it just stays where it's where you put it okay now I'm just going to tie one knot because the glue and the wax between the two of those I think we will be fine and I'll leave the tails to get caught in the glue as well there we, there we go. Okay, so I have all... Let me put this out of the way here. <laughs> junk, junk, junk. Okay, so I got these to keep them closed. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and close this. Oh, actually get it on both sheets. There we go. So now I think I will be able to get this glued on here properly. And I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. Come on, glue. Come on, glue. Okay. Definitely putting it on my thread. And then I want to put it all around the outside, the inner outside edge. Because I would prefer not to have glue smeared all over the place. 
All right. Let me get my tweezers for this job. And right there. Yeah. Just holding it for a second. If I could fit one of these in there, I would, but I can't. So I'm going to have to let that dry. And one thing I forgot that I didn't ink this page, but uh, I don't think it'll be very hard um, inking it once this is dry. Uh, I was really tickled with the way my spokes turned out. Some of them are a little darker, some of them a little rustier. And I have a few with a little touches of glitter on them. So very happy with how those turned out. And I may go back to page one and put a few of them on there. All right. Okay, so I think this is going to be an excellent... Let's just do this, and then I can move on. There. So I'm going to ink this, and then I'll come back to you. Because then we'll just finish this off and stick it in our book. Okay, so I am putting this down on my page. And I put Fabri-Tac on my... Uh, yes, I did. I put Fabri-Tac on the material on the back of the flaps. I'm just going to flatten that down. Spread that glue around as well as possible. That's wanting to be a little stickler right there. I've got to redo my nails. On the... I guess it was June 1st or June 3rd. I go and I get a pedicure, a manicure, and a haircut. That is my birthday present from my husband and my son. So I am so excited. Uh, I don't get the, the um, acrylic nails. I get the gel nails. I don't know. I don't know what the difference is, really, but um, I just I, I've I've uh, I get I have good good fingernails, but I can't you know it's just it's just so much work, <laughs> and that gel stuff just stays on there forever, and I don't have to deal with it. I got enough going on right now. I don't need all of that. And I believe my button is on. Let me just get this. Make sure this is down. I also prepped my page. I put my uh, brads on. And... I finished edging with my, that just does not want to stay down, uh, Distress Ink. 
yeah. I guess I did not edge my page, though. That would probably be a good thing to do, huh? Let me get... I did not do that. That's a little bit better. Okay, so don't forget to do all the prep for your page as well. All right, and so now I'm going to put this big old fat glob of glue that has been boiling out of the top of my Fabri-Tac. If you get an air bubble, just unsqueeze the top, squeeze the bottle, tighten the top back while you hold the bottle squeezed, and then it will suck back in whatever is in the, you know, that, that bubble that's forcing all of that garbage out of there. Okay, so I'm going to not want this so tight that I can't get anything into it. And I don't think, no, I won't be able to get that in there. There. There! Okay, so. Um, can't really go to the next page while that dries. <laughs> um, yeah. I did think that I would like this here I think that would be nice uh, on the on the tab so I'm gonna leave that sitting there and um, yeah I am really very happy with the way all of these things have turned out so far so I hope you guys will join me for uh, page three which is the back of the file folder plus we'll be doing the tab uh, well, I've gone over that with you. I will probably just do the tab myself. You know, you have, you have your, your template from another piece. You're just going to line it up, draw your lines, and then cut inside the line so it makes it smaller. And then you're just going to put it in there. And then you can seal this piece of paper down that's on the flap side. All right. So that is it until we go to do the tag. And we'll try. I got, I got something I'd like to see happen. But I don't know if I'll like it or whatever. So that, but that's for later on. And we still have to glue down the bottoms here. So we're actually creating a pocket. And again, I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to put my pin back in my glue. Because I'm trying to be a good girl about my glue. Now that. Is getting stuck it on something. There we go. In and out easy, but it keeps bringing up little bits. So, as long as it's bringing up little bits, there, no little bits. Okay. All righty. Let's see. How is this? Yeah, it seems like it's pretty close to dry. 
So you can either just lift it up and put it on the actual kind of vest part, or you can put it on the paper. So this actually started out to be a tea pocket, but I, I said, but I need kind of a little twist. I want a kind of a tea pocket. You know, a tea pocket would have been across this way and a slat down here, and these would have been opened. So this is, you know, kind of a tea pocket. <laughs> And I wanted to have another opportunity to bring in material. So that was nice. I'm probably going to have to put more glue down right there. I don't know. Okay. So on the inside, we're going to do collaging. And then this is next. I'm going to go ahead and put my brads in. And I'll be back. Get you guys straight. You were going over here. <laughs> Bye.